Hi, this is Carol Ann Sherman, and I'm going to show you right now how we're going to do a little trial portrait on a piece of Yupo. I'm ready to do this big painting, actually, but I want to try out some of my colors first. If you've seen some of my other lessons, I've shown you how to transfer the drawing with a light box and just do an important part. So we can do a small part and see if we like the colors. In my case, I used one background color throughout the whole painting, so it's kind of tricky sometimes. It's easier for me to paint this way and find out if I like it or not in a small painting than to start on my whole sheet and find out later that I didn't like the color I used. Normally when I do a skin tone or I do a portrait, I, I normally will use something along the yellow lines or the orangey lines because it, I find it a little more compatible with the flesh tones. But today, because we're doing a little picture of Sarah here and she is standing, she's on a boat actually, and she's against this gorgeous blue sky, we're going to try going with a uh, Holbein Horizon Blue Horizon. So I'm going to take this painting and the first thing I'm going to do is lay down my background like I always do. I'm going to paint the whole thing blue. And I am going to very carefully put some of this paint on my Yupo. Take my big wash brush a little water on it and we're going to spread this paint all over the paper. It doesn't matter if you have brush strokes on it or not because it's really going to get pretty much covered up. We're not going to see those strokes later. We just want to get the pigment moved around the paper. Now sometimes, especially if I'm doing a quickie like this and I want to try something different, see how it's going to work out. I may put my whole background in in horizon blue and then just for a sky effect, I may come in here and take a little bit of lilac, run it through my painting. So I have other areas of the painting that are going to come out a little different color, but it's, it's just slightly planned and not that much. So I'm going to take that the way it is. We are going to take a roller. Actually, we'll use our little roller on this one because it's not a really big piece of paper. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use tissues this time. I'm going to lay a tissue down a little crinkled, not too much. Very good. That's just the effect that I would like to have. Do it down here. Do it down here. One there. One there. We know that this part of her face is going to be in a flesh tone, so I'm not going to leave a lot of paint on it where I know that I've got to go with a conflicting color. Most of all, this is to get the background done. I'm going to come in with a flat, naked roller now. And burnish this a little so we still have some of this texture. I think we need just a little more of that blue down to the right corner. Let's get a little of this over here. Now, be careful not to have any oils or any makeup or sunscreen or grease or potato chips or anything like that on your fingers because if you do, you're going to get little resistant spots. If you do get them, the easiest way to handle it is just to take a piece of tissue and wipe it out. Just take one piece of tissue, just rub it out like that. If you think you have a fingerprint, come back in with your paint and we can fix it up. Dry your brush. You don't want to go in with a lot of water. You want to just keep enough pigment on the brush like this. And we're going to come in with the roller again and fix that right up. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is move on to Sarah's hat. She looks a little like a pirate here on the boat with this hat. I'm 
actually we're going to take a lot of this out because we're going to go with the straw color kind of and it's not going to be compatible it's going to be too green if i leave the blue background under it so i'm coming in just with my cat's tongue brush which is kind of a lifesaver for me because it gives me all the things i need it gives me flat edge it gives me an angled edge and most of all it gives me a very fine point that's a pretty fine point for a 24 brush Okay, I'm going to take my toilet paper, roll over that hat, never leave home without it, keep your toilet paper handy. And I don't mind if a little of the blue stays in there, that's really okay with me. Now, let's go in there and work on that hat a little bit. And I'm coming with kind of a straw color, which I think for this yellowy hat, we're going to come in with a uh, combination. This is my little palette map. tells me what colors I have on here. Let's see if we want it to be somewhere between permanent yellow deep and new gamboge. We can do that. And possibly a little greenish yellow in there with it. And after all, this is our trial piece. So here's the permanent yellow. Don't forget you're painting on Yupo, so you can fix anything that happens. If we make a mistake, we'll go right over it and fix it. And keep the pattern moving smoothly. We're going to be painting the hair later, so we can always come in and go over the hat where we need to. Don't worry if you get outside the lines. It's, it's allowable. I'm going to pick up this little guy, which is just a little rubbery thing, is what we'll call it, for lack of better words. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to pattern her hat. Because it's a woven straw hat, we're going to try to go with the shape of the hat. You want to do this fairly quickly so it doesn't dry on you. Now, because this is a woven straw hat, again, what I'm going to do next is take this little guy and go the other way, which will give us kind of a woven straw look. Keep in mind that I'm doing this one specifically to know what I'm going to do later on when I do the big painting. And I think that works real well. Just go the opposite way. There we go. Now, the little holes in the crown of her hat are going to be a little darker. So I'm probably going to use for this some more of my yellow and a little bit of burnt umber just to give the shading effect. I don't tape my paper down to a board or anything when I work and uh, because I can't turn it around like this. And I, because I work fast and I work while the paper is wet, I don't want to run my arm through it any more than absolutely necessary. Very good. I think we'll put a leather band on this hat. So we're going to use more of the burnt umber. Don't want to water it down too much. This is the underside of the hat, so it's going to come darker. I'm going to, again, mix up that yellow, possibly a little new gamboge with some bluish tones in it, and do the shadow side underneath the hat down here like this. Again, we're going to take this little rubber orange thing, come in, and we're going to pattern it. We don't want to go behind her dark on that and, and no dark on this side. So what I'm going to do is come out the other side behind her ear with a little more of this dark color. Good. <laughs> 